scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Beyond anything physical that makes a man, there are spiritual qualities that men carry that distinguish them in life and destiny. Please, I want you to pay attention. Every man that is made, genuinely made, there is a spirit factor that is responsible for all that you see manifest. There is no man who is just made from the resources of this realm alone. As vast and as diverse as they are, if you last in relevance and you make any constructive impact in this life, Part of the resources that must have made you you must have been outsourced from a realm that is higher than this dimension. Behold, I show you a mystery. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Genesis 25. <laughs> no matter what you give anybody you seek to succeed you, you have not truly blessed them if you, tr if you do not transfer the mantle, the spirit, the unction, and teach them the secrets of maintaining it. You don't only transfer mantles and anointings. You must teach them your secret with God that kept it. Please pay attention. We're about to pray now. Genesis 25. The entire text is from verse 1 to 11. But we may jump a few places for time's sake. Follow carefully. I'll begin my reading. Then again, Abraham took a wife. Remember, this was when Sarah passed on. The Bible says they brought him another woman called Keturah. Verse 2. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Median, Median, and all those names. Verse 3. In total, Abraham had about eight children that we know. Six from Keturah and then one from Sarah and then one from Hagar are we together verse 4 now okay he's just talking about let's jump to verse 5 I'm saving time the Bible says everybody please read it one to read does this look like something you saw in the parable Remember uh, in the, the story of um, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Verse 6. <laughs> but to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, he gave what? Wow. Abraham gave all that he had to the one he knows is a son of covenant and promise. But to the rest, he called them and gave them gifts and sent away from Isaac, his son. The Bible says, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Read 7. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived. A hundred and three score and fifteen years. Jump to 11, please. Verse 11. And it came to pass... After, that, the after the death of Abraham, that God blessed how many? 
what of the rest how many sons did you read that he had and now the bible says after abraham died god blessed his son isaac what of the rest what did he give isaac that he did not give the rest Genesis 26 from verse 12. Please give us New King James Version if we can find that. Genesis 26 and verse 12. There was something Abraham gave Isaac that the rest did not have. The Bible says he gave them gifts. But to Isaac he gave all that he had. Everyone, please read with me. We're reading from verse 12 and then I will continue. Ready? One to read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year and the lord he did not sow that same year because he was the only one who sowed many people sow just like him but what was on his head was now controlling what was around his life verse 13 be patient and read one to read and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very what was on his head brought him what he had now in 14 go to 14 what did he have of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines he gave his sons gifts but he gave this boy a mantle he said this is all that made me me go with it you may go empty but you cannot remain empty with this on your head verse 15 we're reading to 16 i'm saying this because this night something is going to come upon your life in the name of jesus christ now the philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of abraham his father and they had filled them with earth verse 16 it says abimelech said to isaac go away from us for you are much mightier that means there is something you can receive while you are receiving it your hand is still empty your bank account is still empty but destiny begins to rejoice and say you got something you got something more than money you got something more than relationships you got something more than a name. I reserve this to be the last because there are few people who ever receive this. Hear me. Whether for men of God or business people or captains of industry, this is the mystery behind the inability for sons to reproduce what is on their fathers. They are looking for physical things, but they never cease to carry that one factor ah, i sense an anointing already he gave isaac all that he had genesis 27 please genesis 27 we're about to pray please be sensitive Genesis 27, we'll begin our reading from verse 1. We'll read 1 to 7. Everybody please watch. Please, let me have your attention. Don't be distracted. If you are distracted with this story, it's an attack. Just listen carefully. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son! And he said, Behold, here am I. We're reading to seven. He said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Next verse. Now therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison. Next verse. And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it unto me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Verse 5. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, 
and Asos went to the field to hunt for venison and bring and to bring it verse 6 and Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son saying behold I heard thy father speak to Esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless you before the that bless you before the Lord before my death now jump for sake of time to verse 18 I want to show you a very deep mystery the highest form of inheritance that can be transferred and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am I this is Jacob now who art thou my son and Jacob lied to his father I am Esau thy firstborn I have done according as thou badest me arise I pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son and he said because the Lord thy God brought it to me he's lying you know, as advised by his mother and Isaac said unto Jacob come near I pray thee that I may feel thee my son whether thou be my very son Esau or not reading to 29 22 and Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and he felt him and said the voice is Jacob's voice but the hands are the hands of Esau and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother Esau's hands so he blessed him 24 look at he said are thou my very son Esau and he said I am watch this now and he said bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee and he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he did, and he drank 26 and his father said unto him come near now and kiss me my son 27 and he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and bless him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed 28 therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine next verse let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee he said be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons oh 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 bow down to thee cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee verse 30 and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made the end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came from his hunting watch this and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said I am thy son thy firstborn Esau 33 and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and I have eaten of all before thou camest and I have blessed him and yea he shall be blessed it's a law I've released it already now watch this 34 when Esau heard the words of his father the Bible says he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and he said unto his father bless me even me also my father verse 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away where is the blessing and how do you take it away because he did not carry any physical thing is it not just to speak couldn't he speak again ah there is more to the realm of the spirit than you see 
how can a gentle man just cry a matured adult crying and the father said sorry so it's not about repeating words there was something that had already come on jacob let's finish to 36 and he said is not he rightly named jacob for he had supplanted me these two times number one he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou not reserved a blessing for me even one can i tell you this believe me when i tell you what is on your head is what controls what is around your life there are many people who ha whose hands are full but their heads are empty and easily what is in your hands can evaporate real inheritance is not the physical things you carry the conviction of the one before you the name that he gives you the relationships that he gives you the physical assets which is the least and then the greatest is the mantle and the grace that turned him you will hear the stories of people especially in the body of Christ you will hear a man of God tell you when God called me I could not even speak English and today he has a ministry around the world brothers and sisters it takes more than hard work there are spiritual forces that may have come to partner with such a person there are people who came to this Abuja they did not have up to 100 naira but their mama sent them from the village saying i don't have money but i once helped missionaries in 1971 and they said may my children be blessed my son go with this blessing and that gentleman will carry a box looking like an arm robber and as soon as he steps in abuja the forces of the spirit start mobilizing themselves hear me this is why some people do not fear it is not what is on their hand it is what is on their head that yea i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil hear me when i tell you i am a product of many anointings this is what i mean i have secured the blessing the sworn blessing of many people hold on do you see why they took jesus to the temple immediately he was born they took him to the temple and met anna the prophetess she spoke over him met simeon the prophet spoke over him they said now jesus you can go we we guarantee you will succeed was our father in the lord bishop david Oyedepo who said he was somewhere in the u.s and the lord cut short his meeting and said return back and make my people rich he didn't give them any physical money but he came back with an anointing that he can declare and say be blessed and you will hear that somebody did not apply for a job and yet they called him because thou anointest my head with oil but i see the results of my cup you don't anoint my cup you anoint my head but it's my cup that runs over listen believe me sometimes i wish i have the liberty to share testimonies but in many regards it will sound like arrogance i remember years ago a man of god prayed a prayer for me i met that man and i greeted him and i prayed an elderly man and he just said a prayer i i i i, I was it, it took a long time to say amen because he laid hands on me and he said apostle he said may god create a problem that only you can solve i said ah no why i'm somebody who is for the body i don't like all these kinds of things how can a man pray that kind of prayer you've heard my story that i was in just many years ago and i went to go and buy sugar cane listen true story and there were two old women who were trying to buy i think sugar cane it was not more than 100 naira i pleaded with them i said you are my parents i'm your child please give me the privilege of paying for you they said no i said let me pay and when i paid they began to bless me and one of the women 
bless me in Hausa. She said, my son, forever walk upon gold. Men are not just made by circumstances. There are spiritual investments that men carry. I've shared with you my stories of my encounters with the mantles upon God's generals. I don't just come and make empty noise. No. Now you understand what happened when Jesus appeared to me. I've shared with you my story. When he appeared to me, he never gave me anything physical, but he stretched his hands and light from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that light entered into me, that surge of power and that surge of grace. Please help them. I came here tonight to redefine inheritance for you. Inheritance is not cars and houses. No, that is the least. Inheritance is not just estates. You have not helped your son, let me tell you. If the only thing you give him is a car and a house, armed robbers can steal the car. They can demolish the house. But can you give something that cannot rust, cannot be destroyed? Hear me he gave the remaining children gifts but he gave Isaac everything he had and yet there was no Isaac carrying a truckload calling a truck there are many young people who have been praying for their parents to die Lord let them die so I can get the two-bedroom flat don't insult your destiny what was upon your father that made him to never beg that's what you should look for not three bedroom flats not two bedroom flats there are shamefully i say it with all due respect there are siblings and family members fighting for years and decades over mundane properties not knowing that if you receive what made the men themselves you can change the tides there are people today who do not see eyeball to eyeball this car is for me this house is for me that is the least of it we're about to pray i came tonight full of the spirit i want to release something from my spirit believe me help them honestly i came from the depth of my spirit that something will be placed upon your head that will so turn your life around We're wrapping up. Two keys for receiving from fathers. Let me give you two biblical keys. You want to receive from a father, a spiritual father, a physical father, a financial father, a political father, any kind of father. There are two keys. Number one, the first key that controls receiving from fathers is honor. The first key you will never this is why our generation of young men do not succeed because we have institutionalized this honor we see it as a thing of pride young people who have not produced anything they've not raised anybody they've not changed any life but we can sit down and mark the scripts of fathers and dare to criticize every father deserves your honor even if you see their nakedness the bible says noah's sons they saw their nakedness and one called his brothers to come and laugh even though he was drunk when he got up he knew they were looking at him there are some things that are there and the other one moved backwards and covered him and he got up and cursed some of the sons two keys number one honor 
Malachi chapter 1 we'll read 6 to 8 fire is going to fall here right now Malachi chapter 1 from verse 6 to 8 it says a son honored his father and a servant his master if then I be a father where is mine honor and if I be a master where is my fear saith the Lord God of hosts O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised your name we're reading to 8 ye offer polluted bread upon my altar and ye say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say the table of the Lord is contemptible verse 8 and if ye shall offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if ye offer the lame and the sick is it not evil offer it now to your governor will it be pleased with him or accept thy person say the Lord of hosts can I tell you this do you know why Jacob Isaac already had flocks but he said the one I want to eat is the one you go and get not the one at the back of the house why would he have flocks and herds and now tell his son carry your weapons of war I want the one that came from your effort place value on it let me eat let your honor for me turn to joy because that blessing from my spirit is only released through joy there are many children today who are carrying curses from their parents not demons because they've spent their lives causing pain to their parents sometimes we ship all kinds of things in the name of westernization and you see children insult their parents insult any kind of person and I, I, I'm saying this respectfully speaking young people whether in this country or across Africa this is one of the mysteries behind the hard life of young people we have no honor at all for parents not just physical parents anybody can get up and just insult anybody no you will carry courses in successions we read it already Genesis 27 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he say make me venison such that I love make me venison from your weapons of war honor is not just about giving money or giving seeds but let me tell you this as a person and as a principle you will never see me go and stand before any of our fathers of faith in this nation or any of any great mentor or father whether in business whether in whatever area I won't sit down and say I'm a great man Apostle Joshua Selman I understand this law when I honor I honor from the depth of my heart there are many pastors today you can lie down and hold the legs of a man of God and never receive jack because it comes through honor you can even kneel down and still be standing up in your heart it's not about all of this pretense and this this hypocrisy people do genuine heartfelt honor is the reason why you see great people hardly reproduce themselves everything God gives a great man it is supposed to be for everyone who is interested but very few people do you know that there are many homes like I told you the biological children of the man and his wife don't seem to carry their grace and then you will see one stranger who maybe came to squat the person who communicates honor is the one who carries the mantle learn it from tonight let honor be a culture husbands honor your wives you don't honor your wife your prayer will not be answered the Bible said that wives honor your husbands don't say he looked for me what does that mean children honor your parents bring in all this westernization and you will punish your future in a way that you cannot imagine parents also respectfully speaking honor your children because there are things through their life that you may not have seen that God is revealing help this woman I'm seeing oil coming on her the first key for receiving from fathers 
fathers here does not just mean men alone those who have gone ahead is honor genuine honor how many pastors today talk about their leaders their overseers their, they gossip about them tear them down and then come up yes sir how are you sir that's the reason why no impartation works because the honor is not genuine how many business people how many people in corporations they sit down and tear their superiors insult them and talk all kinds of things and see them ah, see you sir god bless you you can cut cake for you and you can eat but that is it but there can be others who will say look i know this man is not perfect but i choose to honor him whatever granted him grace to come to abuja here and in five years he has become this i stand with understanding and i know and one day he can look at you and say i bless you or you will say let me tell you a story in 1971 my father died in 1972 my mother died in 1973 all my helpers died so how did you become great that is what is leading you to and a two hour conversation will become a six hour of conversation in that office and at the end of it you will say i met one missionary who just said a prayer and i want to pray that prayer for you sometimes you see our father in the lord that is you he will ask everybody to stand up see just because people don't tell you anointings are like addresses you can know where they came from when you see extraordinary results happening for people please let me tell you this look beyond the physical frame there are people who is a combination of strange mantles and anointings upon their heads hallelujah when papa idahosa was alive according to god's servant bishop Oedipo, he would tell you that one time he came to him and delivered something and he gave him an opportunity to pick some money and he said no if i remember correctly he said no 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 what i want is that blessing and he told him kneel down he said from tonight i impart upon you the grace of on time that before any need arises the answer comes and he received it when god grant me the grace and the privilege to lie down and pray alone in daddy joe's prayer room I was not praying and saying god bless me give me tea give me bread i would be stupid to pray that kind of prayer i laid down there and one of the things i prayed i said lord the covenant of answered prayer of many fathers who have gone that you have placed upon this man that he can speak casually and shift the climate of nations may that same grace come upon me i shared with you my story when we went to equity state and I saw people dying at 130 something, 140 something, 150 something. I said, no, there has to be a grace here. When we were done preaching, years ago, I now came back and we stopped at a house where someone, 136, he just died. I said, please, look for the oldest man here so that we can receive this grace for long life. There were hardly people there who could speak english eventually we got somebody who could speak limited english and they took us to one man old man and we said we are men of god we just want him to speak over our lives and he looked at me and smiled and said kneel down those who carry this thing know they have it all let me tell you those who carry it they know they have it you don't stand before people as colleagues and receive mantles no mantles don't honor don't don't respond to colleague mentality oh i used to know this one and as they prayed i felt like a crown was being put upon my head i now honored him gave him a seed and when we were going to go and enter the car thanking the women who we asked initially I just saw one of the women and they said that was the wife of this senior um, the man of God this veteran that had gone they now do you know that the woman was in her hundreds and yet she was standing strong no stick no nothing I said what is this 
I said, let's go back home. If he's dead, she's still alive in him. Two have become one. The woman tapped me and said, come. She opened the room and started showing me the pictures. That was the wife of his youth. I hope you know those days they used to marry as teenagers. That woman had stayed with him till his final days. And then I said, since this man is dead and he died serving the Lord, they should tell her that, please, they've prayed for us, but I want prayer from her. The woman said I should kneel down and she removed both of her shoes. She stood on barefoot and prayed for more than 15 minutes in Yoruba. I don't know what she was saying. All I know is that there was a mantle. I returned with speed to Zaria and I said, my people, I came with an anointing. Stand up. Let me release something upon you first. Hear me. Your possibilities are defined by the mantles that are upon you. One day, a man of God prayed for me. And he said, son, because of this apostolic grace upon your life, I impart upon you. I never knew there was such a grace. He said, I impart upon you the kingmaker anointing. You've heard me say it. Kingmakers never become the kings themselves, but they can enthrone and dethrone kings. So you can stand and speak over an ordinary man and say, may God lift you. And that grace would defy anything and place that person there. It's a grace. Number one, honor. Number two, service slash support. The second key for receiving from fathers is there must be a track record of service or supporting what they represent genesis 30 when you read from verse 26 to 30 genesis 30 let's read very quickly we're about to pray give me my wives he said jacob now in the house of leban and my children for whom i have served thee and let me go for thou knowest my service which i have done unto you next verse and Laban said unto him listen carefully pray thee I pray thee if I have found favor in thine eyes tarry ye for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake Isaac went to the house of Laban and turned things around and he said appoint me my wages keep the scripture there and I will give it we're reading to 30 29 and he said unto him thou knowest how i have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30. Hmm. for it was little which thou hast before i came and it is now increased unto a multitude and the lord had blessed thee since my coming and now when shall i provide for my own household also listen when you carry mantles upon your head there are people who will give you jobs not because of any physical effort like Laban they would have studied that anywhere this man sits down have you noticed that this man came into this business have you noticed that this man got a job into this parastatal and things began to change it is not always about physical work read your Bible the spiritual climates that you carry can define possibilities in your life so you can hear people come and give you testimonies here they are not stage managing it we fear god how does someone just come and sit down and then by a week later his life just changes the same way your life too is about to change this night redefining inheritance now you know what an inheritance is now let me tell you this the final thing i'll tell you is this fans don't receive inheritance supporters don't receive inheritance inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation let me repeat inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation Only a shoe 
will reign forever. To His kingdom there'll be no end. Hear me. I'm about to pray. Please believe me when I tell you, life does not have to be this hard. It is the bankruptcy of something on your head you have not received. Some of you, probably, if you've been part of this vision for up to one year, and your life is not producing any results, check your life. There is something you are missing. Believe me. Believe me. There is the covenant of His presence that can bring, you've heard me say it, that I entered a covenant with God that I would never meet a person twice for that person's life to change. You cannot come, if you come to sit down here as a fan, unfortunately, or supporters club, or well-wishers, it has to be a covenant revelation. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe that something can come upon my life in spite of my background my lowly estate i believe that this wealth and finance thing can be settled once and for all i believe you can, you are the god of portions you can give me portions even in a strange land i believe as a man of god that something can step upon my life and ministry will no longer be a desert land i believe as a politician that I can carry a mantle that can fight for me at the gates. In the next two minutes, I'm going to allow you with the Lord. Every dimension that you need to step into, I will leave you in prayer for the next two minutes. Please, I want you to cry from the depth of your heart. For some of us, it's poverty you need to end once and for all, for God's sake. For some of us, it's weakness and limitation. Politicians, this may be your chance to access superior grace that produces results. Businessmen, here can be your chance to rise. There are young men and young women saying, Apostle, physically speaking, I don't have any advantage, but the God of heaven can help you. pray our global family following online pray in the name of Jesus have been given to the church mandates have been given to the church for the kings to be born the mantles to return in strength and power from the depth of your heart. Mantles have been given to the church. Have been given to the church. Power to the church. Grace is distributed in the church. For the sons to arise. Mantles to return. The boroughs to arise, Samuels to rise, for kings to be born, nations to be blessed, for cities to rise with the victory of kings. Hey.
are you praying now hear me please listen listen please listen listen you've heard people come and stand here and everybody will tell you they listen to this message this grace called favor I told you my story how that Esther anointing and that favor came upon my life for some reason it is one of the hardest graces upon my life that I've seen people receive I don't know why it's easy for people to receive the prophetic receive the healing anointing but I don't know what is it about this mantle for favor that has been very difficult and yet I submit to you by God that if you do not access the genuine anointing help them please the grace for favor there are many things you cannot do in your life this world is a cruel and a wicked world I would never be able to do what God is doing across the globe today outside of the favor of God as I will tell you there are many things I do not know I'm a student myself I learn and continue to learn I learned from the Holy Spirit I learned from Scripture I learned from our fathers I learned from people with proven track record but I can tell you one thing that I understand I understand the dynamics of favor believe me when I tell you I know what it takes to compel systems and structures to open for you among the many graces you may desire as I give you one minute again to pray I want you to cry for this grace called favor Lord let it come upon my life by your mercy the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord had blessed
One more minute, I'm about to speak over your life. Tonight will be one service that you will not forget in a hurry. Hallelujah. 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 There are people what you need to receive is the conviction of every great man that you admire. The first inheritance that you need. Study their mindset, their beliefs. Their convictions number two for some of you you need the leverage of the name a compendium of the credibility the track record the value the contribution and the honor that has been accorded that name for some of you what you need are the strategic relationships and connections that provide you a leverage for your work with God for ministry for business for your career your pursuit for some of you in all honesty what you need is physical support that push could be financial could be in terms of physical estates businesses or whatever it is but for everybody here this one is not some i can tell you this last dimension there is a mantle there are graces behind the exploits that you see in business behind the exploits that you see in ministry behind the exploits that you see in politics and governance behind the exploits that you see in career more than all the physical things whether diabolically or genuinely by the Holy Spirit, any extraordinary physical result has a spiritual component that sponsors it. Unfortunately, many have gone diabolic, but with the dignity of kingdom integrity, you can stand in partnership with Scripture and the Holy Spirit. It takes more than being gifted to excel. Your gift must be anointed. There are many gifted people who remain empty. There are many great people whose voices remain silenced because the requisite level of grace is not there. I want to speak over your life. You don't have to kneel or do whatever. Just, just stand with understanding. I came here from the depth of my heart tonight. This is part one. Part two will be on Saturday during the broadcast. Don't miss it. Call your families and call everybody to connect by faith. Listen, I wish I were not the one doing this. If you look at me physically, there is nothing in this man physically. You would be mistaken. I am not that special as a person. However, that the excellency of power may be on us. Ordinary men. Ordinary men helped by a mighty God ordinary men not as intelligent as necessary not as eloquent not even as visionary as necessary but when that mighty God comes to protect you and invest his jealousy upon your life your life becomes nothing short of a sign and a wonder who am I your mind is so full of me, mortal man. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hear me. Everything that has tied you that came from your physical paternity, limitations that came from your biological father, biological mother or your physical territory I stand by the honor and the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic 
I break you from it now. Help them, please. I break you from it now. I break you from it now. I break you from it now. Every spirit that makes easy things difficult. You saw this with your father. You saw this with your mother. You saw this with your siblings. Sincerely, you have not been able to break through. In the name of Jesus, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I declare in the name of Jesus, I push you to the next season of destiny. Help that man, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Everything that has covered your glory so that you are covered nothing about you can be seen makadosh kadia embrekete seketa by the power that raised christ from the dead i tear that fail right now hear me where your physical father cost you i stand by priesthood to bless you anyone by your physical descent who said it will not be well with you i stand by the privilege of the apostolic call i reverse that statement 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 anyone who said it will not be well with you in the name of Jesus, by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic, I veto that statement and I cancel it. Please pay attention, don't be distracted. The spirit that insists that you must remain poor and beggarly in spite of your hard work, in spite of educational qualification, or you rise up and then you go down some of you see good things but you never lay hold of it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the prophetic I decree and declare between now and the next three months step into prepared blessings 90 days if I be a servant of God I stand by this apostolic mantle in the next three months step into prepared blessings jobs you did not apply for houses you did not build i speak this by the god who called me hear me every inherited battle they fought your father to his grave they fought your mother to his grave now they will not give you peace i aparakatoshkatia help them please in the name of jesus now may the lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means always and by all means inherited financial battles inherited family battles inherited career battles they come to an end now Two more prayers and we're done. My God, I wish God could open your eyes to see what is happening in this place. I'm hearing the month of August that there are people between now and August. Hear me? Between now and August, I stand by Bakatos Katia. Help the helper, please, so she doesn't injure herself. What could not be done throughout 2020, throughout 2021, and even till now, in the name of Jesus, I declare between now and August, step into it, step into it, step up back at all.
Step into it. Let me prophesy recovery. You have lost money. You have lost friends. You have lost opportunities. You have lost relationships. You mishandled favorable opportunities and it slipped your hand. Is there hope for a tree even if it be cut short? The Bible says at the scent of water. I want to speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, I have been commanded to bless. Therefore, I decree and declare everything that has left your life and is not by divine orchestration. I call it back now. Finances be restored. Relationships be restored. Spiritual fire be restored. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. Every parent here, physical parent now, who is struggling with your child in one area, it looks like the devil wants to wage war over your family. And some of you have been depressed asking, Lord, is this how I'm going to die? No responsible child to rise up. Some of you, even the child, the devil is fighting to make sure you don't even have the child. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to our global family first and then to the body of Christ. No one connected to this grace will have a cause to regret over their children. Therefore, by this prophetic word, we release ministering spirits to homes, to schools, everywhere your child is. In the name of Jesus, may they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May they be transformed. May they become responsible children. In the name of Jesus Christ, please wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Amen. 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 We've been commanded to bless, it cannot be reversed. Amen. 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 One more time. let me encourage every parent if God can grant you grace I know it is not easy but if God can grant you grace use this week and speak over your children men you are the priest over your home while your wife and children are sleeping get up in the night praying in tongues and walking around the house laying hands on them tell them don't worry I'm praying for you you just keep sleeping and take authority over the spiritual climate of your family stand like the priest that you are and say satan thus far have you come i have drawn a line over this family you have no business over my wife my children my husband and so on and so forth in the name of jesus christ for someone your season of shame and reproach has come to an end finally in the name of jesus christ now please listen very carefully there are people here who are saying apostle i need jesus there's no need wasting your time let's minimize movement please don't say just stand we're done i need jesus now and i need jesus fast the greatest inheritance that you can have for the believer is the life of god the life of god being imparted to your human spirit main auditorium all of the overflows outside following online you need jesus number one or you need to rededicate your life you're saying apostle 
I truly have given my heart to Jesus, but I need to rededicate my life. I'm going to give you two minutes wherever you are with every sense of love and responsibility. As I count one to five, I'd like you to quickly run and come and stand in front. Let's honor them as they come. Are you coming? Two. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour. Keep coming. God bless you. Come bless me now, my Savior. Three. I'm about to pray. If you are coming, please join them. Unashamedly, do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid. This is home. This is family. Come. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Can I come? Absolutely. Come. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Come to Jesus. Please help those under the anointing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, please look at me, those of you in front here and all the overflows and those watching either live by way of television or the internet or you're watching a rebroadcast. Here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Please do not play with this Jesus issue. We're not playing church or religion here. Your eternal destiny depends on this singular decision. Hallelujah. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life? As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I want you to join with your heart full of faith, knowing that he's right here with you in your room, your office, wherever it is that you're connecting from. Thank you all of you for making this decision. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And you say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray please keep your hands lifted father thank you you always do this to bring glory to Jesus and I thank you for drawing these our brothers and sisters young and old alike to Jesus thank you for the power of the cross in the name of Jesus and by the authority of Scripture, I decree and declare that according to your confession, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the power of sin, my God, Satan, hell, and the grave, I'm seeing the power of God come on two of you who are in front here right now. I declare it broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that from tonight, you walk in the newness of life eternal life is imparted into your spirit i commend you to the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word be grounded and established in righteousness you go forward ever and backward never for in jesus name i pray amen and amen now may i request that you move to my right there are counselors waving their hands they'll have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seats. Let's honor them as they go, Koinonia. Is this the best you can do? Just guide those under the anointing. But let's celebrate them until they are done. 
Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience. One more time, let me please remind you. Thank you. Let me remind you of the Saturday broadcast. All the workers, you are